Welcome to the Immigration.ca live stream series. My name is Andrea and I'm here with immigration lawyer Colin Singer. Colin is managing partner of Immigration.ca and SkilledWorker.com. Thank you very much for joining us today. As some of you know, Canada is a major player now. It's becoming a major, you know, major player in the, uh, you know, in the global technology ecosystem and government policies are actually leading Canadian employers to recruit foreign workers. So today we thought it would be a, a good discussion topic to, to discuss how Canada is actually addressing our chronic shortage of technology workers. So Colin, what is the aim of Canada's policymakers? So uh, Canada is looking to uh, put together a great master plan that will look beyond the current uh, Canadian technology ecosystem. Uh, the goal is to boost a technology skill talent pool uh, of workers in Canada and to facilitate a really fast and seamless transition, uh, an admission and transition to Canada of these kinds of workers on behalf of Canadian employers. Uh, they're typically in what's called the STEM fields uh, and they're doing this through the global talent stream, again, to make available a, a big pool in Canada of highly trained uh, international talent for what the government wants to create as a, a, a hub of technology companies, which is already taking place. Uh, this program was implemented in uh, September 2017. Uh, it's very easy to see the actual qualifications, uh, which we'll go out in a minute, but the sectors that typically are going to draw upon this new program are the startup companies, growing number of startups in Canada, the gaming uh, industry, the visual effects and animation that go in the gaming, uh, in the film industry, uh, service software providers. This is a very, very specific area that's really taking hold in Canada. Uh, advanced manufacturers using certain technologies. And of course, uh, we can't forget the companies in the sustainable technology field. All of these together uh, form a sector of uh, a group that will very well be able to draw upon the global talent stream. Just to look at some numbers, uh, Canada ranks fifth in the global uh, startup per capita basis. We've really, uh, of course, the leader is, is uh, the USA. Uh, China is a leader as well. You've got uh, a number of players, but Canada is, is certainly very respectable at fifth place. Uh, the startup part of this sector is, is really of interest to many people. Uh, the startup population of companies in Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver, those are the three centers uh, where you're going to see a lot of startups. Montreal has about 800 to 1,400, uh, which have cumulatively received about $800 million in funding. Toronto is the leader, of course, with 2,100 to 2,700. Uh, their total funding is also similar to what Montreal's is with a much lower number of startups. And Vancouver uh, is at, in the range of 800 to 1,100 startups, which have received total funding in the range of 400 million. Interesting, there's a, an interesting AI uh, subcomponent of this. Uh, there is about 650 AI companies, predominantly in Toronto, uh, Montreal, being the major hubs. Um, and many startups, interestingly enough, Many startups are now using a strategy to go global right off the start. Uh, many startups are looking to scale at the earlier stages, especially once they've received funding. This is what we've heard. This is what we're seeing. Many of our clients who are coming to us now uh, on the recruitment side and on the immigration side, we're hearing that uh, as soon as they're receiving funding, they're going right into the scale-up side of things because they're feeling confident uh, that they're going to be able to have these uh, very key people in place. Uh, interesting, Montreal was the hub, the focal point of a, a very interesting conference last week. It's called C2 Montreal, uh, in which many of these technology players were there uh, and many of the business entrepreneurs who are looking at this wonderful program uh, were uh, in Montreal for a three-day conference, which we attended and we were able to uh, receive some great insight. Uh, just a quick snapshot of some companies in Canada. There, uh, People have heard this before, but I'll share uh, what you may already know. Shopify is a major player out of Ottawa, 
planning to hire 200 workers. Lightspeed is a great new company, not so new, but they've got tremendous funding. Uh, Wealth Simple, uh, Elements AI is a Montreal-based company providing uh, artificial intelligence solutions to many uh, mid-sized companies. Uh, so since the global talent stream launched in September of 2017, we know that approximately 1,500 applications have been submitted into the system. Uh, this represents about 350 to 400 uh, employers, all taking place in the first nine months. And it's expected that the, the, the growth potential will be exponential. So the government wants to, they, they haven't formally said this, but they'd certainly like to see 5,000 applications uh, drawing upon this new program and this new initiative uh, in the next 12 to 18 months. Let's talk about some of the basics of how to qualify. Okay, so uh, there's two main components. There's two main components. I mean, we do go through this in, in, in a lot of detail on our website, but it's just a very brief overview. So the first one is the designated referral partners, and the second one is the designated occupations list, and the second one is actually more popular. So just very briefly, I mean, it's a streamlined application process, so it's actually only a 14-day processing time. And uh, That's interesting yeah. in that traditionally to get workers to Canada it would take six months and longer. Right. So to, to scale this, to put a, a, a scaled up m a recruitment program that could bring in many people with very specific skills in only 14 days, is, it's remarkable. It is remarkable. It is. Sure. So it's a question you know, of, of appreciating this wonderful tool that's out there. But yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt you. So yeah, uh, 14 days. Um, and then there's obviously relaxed advertising rules. Right. And obviously the employer will need to show commitment to creating a lasting labor market and benefit for Canada. And obviously they would need to pay the wages. That's it. They have to pay the prevailing wage. So those are the those are the basics. And really, I I, I might say the basics of the program are. You can read it on our site. Um, it's very theoretical, and you'll also see many players in the field writing about the program from what it takes to qualify. And clearly, those are players who are not really involved in the field. Uh, it, it appears readily. It's readily apparent that these are uh, players who are. Are, are putting out the theoretical, but right. what we're here today to show you is some of the practical elements of how the program works from our own in-house experience working as a recruiter for some of these companies and working as an immigration professional uh, for some of the companies that already have I identified uh, their, their candidates that they want to bring in. Okay, so Colin, then how about we share with the viewers some of our current mandates with employers? So uh, we're currently representing companies, uh, for example, uh, who are uh, software service startup companies. Ideally, these are employers uh, who are they're, they're currently Toronto-based. Uh, employers, the government wants to see employers with a 12-month uh, track record. Now, uh, sometimes we'll see uh, companies that don't have the 12 months. We're working with one company that uh, particularly that only uh, f started in December of 2017, but the funding they received is, is very interesting. Uh, I won't reveal the amount, but they've, they've been fully funded. And so they're able to present uh, a benefits plan that is very impressive. And even though they don't have the track record, they're able and have been approved to bring in uh, technology uh, workers under this program. Uh, so the goal here is to be able to, well, the, what the government is really looking for is do you have the potential uh, to, to generate and, and uh, scale up a stable business model? That's going to benefit both the economy, uh, which infers the labor market as well. So, uh, you know, there's many ways to make that presentation, and there's no one way. So if you're an employer and you are a startup company or you're one of the uh, employers that I mentioned earlier in the, in the broad sectors, uh, there's a very interesting opportunity for you to capitalize on bringing in candidates uh, from a wide range of areas. Now, typical candidates that we currently represent are, you know, Typically, we have a, a number of cases with software designers and, and developers. Uh, that's one of the 11 occupations that you'll find uh, in uh, the material that we have on our website. Um, these are computer uh, systems managers or engineers. 
uh, electronic engineers, uh, you'll see that there's a lot of background that an individual could have, a wide-ranging background, depending on the position that an employer needs to hire for. Uh, what we see uh, from employers, they want candidates with minimum of two years. If you don't have two years experience, it's very hard to really stand out and be a competitive candidate compared to what's out there. So you really want to have a minimum of two years and even more experience. Um, as I mentioned earlier, degrees, they typically have a software engineering degree or an electrical or electronic engineering degree. And there's many other variables, of course. If you're in the field, you already know uh, what degrees you could possibly have uh, that would complement what I just mentioned. Typically, the candidates that we are seeing that are going into the system are earning in the range of 90000 for the what we call the lower, but they're not really lower, but it's, it's 90000 as the minimum. And we're seeing some of our clients are, are receiving salaries of $135,000 per year. Uh, so it, it really is going to depend on, on the position. Uh, so that, you know, yeah, so, that, so that's a, the general snapshot of an, a typical employer and a typical candidate. Okay, so what should these uh, interested employers and candidates do? So it's important to know that, again, the Global Talent Stream is a work permit program, but it goes very well for, uh, for all intents and purposes. It goes very well and blends well with the permanent residence side of things that Canada has, has, has uh, been promoting since 2015, the express entry system. So if you are a candidate in one of the technology sectors and you are interested in Canada as a destination, uh, you really want to be going into uh, putting yourself in a position to stand out. You want to apply into the uh, express entry system. You want to submit an expression of interest application into the uh, express entry system for a number of reasons. First, you'll have your documentation ready uh, for an employer. When an employer is going to be recruiting, uh, it will give you an edge if you already have uh, an, uh, the groundwork covered uh, on the Canadian side. Your documentation is in hand. Some of these employers are time pressed. They may not organize themselves uh, so well uh, along the way. And, and so when they want to make a hire, uh, unfortunately, things become rushed. And so it's better if you're already in the express entry system. Uh, and also some of the provinces are participating uh, in the express entry system. They're drawing candidates for permanent residence uh, with uh, qualifications that are not as high as would be needed if you were being selected by the federal government's uh, express entry system. So BC and Ontario, for example, are selecting candidates from the pool and some of these candidates are, are technology workers. Some of these candidates are going into uh, working for some of these startup companies in Vancouver, in Toronto. Um, so it's important that you get yourself positioned on how to stand out. Working with a good recruiter who's in the industry would be an advantage for it. It could be an advantage. Um, this will enable you to quickly transition into a work permit for an employer who wants to bring you over. If you're already in the express entry system, you have all the documentation in hand. You've already, you, you've needed to have the documentation to get into the express entry system. So if you are in the system and you now come across an employer who wants to bring you in under the global talent stream, you can get a work permit in very quick time, obviously 14 days to get the uh, application approved and then a bit of time sometimes it could be two weeks to get your actual visa depending on where you're coming from so you could really uh, interplay both your permanent residence application very effectively with uh, a work permit application under the global talent stream if you're working with a good professional uh, who is positioned uh, both in the technology field and uh, who can find you an employer, or if you found an employer, if you've done your own research and you found an employer, then that employer could be your anchor or your pathway to a work permit and ultimately Canadian permanent residence. So again, getting into the express entry system, working with a professional, the right professional, probably some good 
uh, good strategies to follow. Okay, so that's for candidates. What about employers? What should employers do? So for employers, uh, it, really you, you should be going on in a recruitment uh, mode, and in so doing you would work with well-positioned technology players. Uh, often you're working with a recruiter. We are in the recruitment field, uh, and you'll see good candidates from what we've seen you'll see excellent candidates with transferable experience in the USA, in Europe, in Mexico, and interestingly, also in Brazil, a very large pool of excellent technology workers uh, with very unique experience uh, you'll find in Brazil as well. We've seen some of our clients coming into this program who are Brazilian foreign nationals. Uh, at immigration.ca, we are licensed immigration attorneys, but we're also uh, licensed recruitment professionals. We uh, have been engaged in the recruitment field uh, for 11 years uh, through our global uh, recruiters of Montreal and our skilledworker.com. And interestingly, as anyone who's in the field or who's used a recruiter before, you know you're paying 20%, typically 20 to 25% uh, for these types of, of candidates. Uh, we work on a fixed fee basis. Uh, we charge uh, a fixed fee for both recruitment and the immigration. So if you are working with immigration.ca as an employer, uh, you will find really good value added, considerably less than the typical 20% uh, commission fees that are paid to a recruiter. Uh, talk about what we offer individual candidates. So our individual candidates, they get a self-directed employment search package. So they get a Canadian-style resume, cover letter, and as well as the database. So the database is going to be tailored to them. They'll choose the industries as well as the provinces that they want to include, and we'll give them a database of at least 500 potential hiring employers. And obviously, we'll be giving them tips and tools for their employment search as well. But also, very interestingly, we're going to now be offering them a 60-minute face-to-face live LinkedIn tutorial as well. It's really an interesting part of our practice. We're really proud that we've been able to uh, put this particular component together. Uh, we're seeing some of our clients uh, who have a LinkedIn profile, those that don't have a LinkedIn profile, but in the technology field, practically everyone does. Let, let, let's, uh, let's be clear. Uh, but outside the technology side, uh, we're, we're in a position to help our candidates, uh, individual from our business to individual clients, uh, create a LinkedIn profile or perfect their LinkedIn profile. But if you're in the technology field, you have a LinkedIn profile. Uh, so what we're able to do is work with you and show you uh, really how to use the, the, the recruitment part of things, uh, show you companies that are very, very uh, ideal potential companies to reach out to. It, it's important that you make contact with companies before they're actually hiring. This is really useful. We've been very successful with some of our clients in the fields uh, by helping them stand out and helping them reach out to hiring employers. So they may not be hiring immediately, but these uh, hiring professionals in the companies, the HR people, uh, are in a position to uh, take note of your candidacy. So maybe they'll be recruiting in, in the summer period or in the fall. It's good to make contact with these types of professionals uh, and we're in a position to make, to give you insight on how to go about doing that. So the 60-minute uh, live face-to-face -face tutorial on how to use LinkedIn, we're really excited about that component uh, of of uh, our service package. So, yeah, I think. Um, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I mean, obviously, if you're a candidate, please go to immigration.ca and complete our free online evaluation form. And if you're an employer, please go to the contact us section. We'd love to speak with you. And as always, please follow us on our social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. And uh, obviously, if you want to tune into the next live stream, we'll be keeping you posted as well through our social media. Great. We've covered everything? I believe so, Colin. Great. Thank you very much for everyone for joining us this morning. I uh, hope you found it informative. And if you have any further questions, get in touch with us. Get in touch with us. And until then, we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you very much.